Hey guys, what is happening? I hope you are enjoying the RC hobby as much as I am today. If you are, let me know what you're doing these days in terms of RC in the comment section below. Today we're going to be talking about what to set that voltage cutoff to. Now I understand that we've done a video very similar to this one in the past. There have been a couple questions that you guys have asked and as a result of what I should do about that, I've decided to make a video that goes directly at that voltage cutoff to talk about the specific value that we should use to set within our power systems. So the first thing that we gotta cover is what exactly is a voltage cutoff? Well, a voltage cutoff is something that is designed to make certain that our power system battery pack, the one that powers our brushless motor, does not get too low. There's a couple reasons why we don't want that battery pack to get too low. Uh, the first one is primarily due to safety. A battery pack that goes significantly under the absolute minimum voltage becomes a hazard to us and risk of any sort of potential fire can be the result if you end up running that battery too low. The second part is the actual lifespan that we can get out of that battery pack. And the third item is if your pack gets too low, you can actually lose reception of your onboard electronics. That's the control system within your radio controlled model. Those are the top two reasons as to why we actually use a voltage cutoff with an extra added bonus one in there as well. Now up on the board we have the typical measured value of a voltage cutoff is a voltage per cell. And these types of values can be programmed into most common ESCs found in the market. Now let's talk about our LiPo battery. Our lithium polymer batteries that we typically use for power systems in RC today is set at about 3.00 volts as an absolute minimum. Now it's very key to understand that that is an absolute minimum. You never ever even want to hit this voltage value. Another point here is that this represents an unloaded or resting voltage and that is also significant to us as we will talk about our next point here we'll kind of connect the dots between them. So the conventional cutoff value, this is the cutoff value that's been used historically for many many years as default on speed controls has been 3.00 volts per cell and most speed control companies within the early days have adopted this and used it since our LiPo battery minimum is 3.00 volts per cell. However, there's a big difference between this 3.00 and this 3.00. Yes, they are the same. However, this is unloaded and this one would be when your vehicle is in motion, you're driving your radio controlled car, you're flying a radio controlled airplane, that motor is going to create a voltage drop across your battery pack. Now the simple reason as to why you'd see a voltage drop across your voltage source is because yes, a battery has internal resistance and anything that has resistance is going to see some sort of voltage drop. And that's why we do not actually get 3.00 volts per cell as an unloaded value here, it's going to be loaded. So if you were to take that battery pack, sit it on a desk, it's going to start to increase in voltage until it becomes the unloaded resting voltage, probably more than 3.4 volts in a common situation. So now I wanna talk about uh, some of the pluses and minuses that you get out of having a higher voltage cutoff. So you can set these values right into your speed control as we've talked about. Most manufacturers have allowed us to program this whether we use a USB cable to do so or we just program off of a simple card or better yet just using our radio to program that value. So as you go and increase the voltage cutoff that you're programming into that speed control, you will end up seeing a reduced amount of capacity that is available to you. And this is both in light loaded conditions as well as heavy loaded conditions. And both of these can apply with the same power system. Let's talk about a quick example where you can actually see both of these values in the same radio controlled model. Let's say you're operating under a heavy load within a radio controlled vehicle and as soon as you go and run that vehicle at 50% throttle, you've now essentially lightened up the load of that model and maybe you instead of 50% you drop down to even 30% and it becomes even a lighter load for that specific radio controlled vehicle. 
Either way, you are going to experience less capacity available if you have a higher voltage cutoff. So now let's talk about some of the improvements that we get. So this arrow, it doesn't mean that it increases. We are just identifying that we get some sort of improvement. And power system temperatures, because we're gonna have a reduced amount of runtime within our power system, we're gonna see better temperatures. Uh, better yet, we're gonna see better battery lifespan if we are able to increase the voltage cutoff, just in case we actually hit that voltage cutoff. So those are two primary reasons as to why you would want to go and increase that cutoff where the one drawback is going to be the capacity that you have available within that battery pack is going to be reduced. Now, dependent on what your application is, you may decide as a personal preference to increase your cutoff or to decrease that cutoff. A couple things that I wanted to mention, and that is what is actually missing from the above? Well, a couple things are missing from the above, and one of them is weak battery packs is going to prevent you from seeing a significant amount of capacity because you're going to hit that voltage cutoff a lot sooner than if you were to have a battery pack that can perform well. So some people what they do is they go and adjust that voltage cutoff so that they can pull a little bit more capacity out of that battery pack. This is fine if you're willing to sacrifice this type of stuff within your power system. My recommendation would be to replace those weak batteries with healthy batteries and keep that voltage cutoff the same as with what you had it at when that was brand new. Another point here is if you are straight line racing, this is another area where your voltage cutoff can significantly impact the results that you achieve. And when you're doing this, the only way to really figure it out is to have a data log in front of you from your speed control or from any other third party uh, hardware within your power system to pull and extract that that actual specification of power draw out so you can see exactly what's happening within your cutoffs, your voltage, your power output, and a whole bunch of other parameters. The biggest thing here is some power systems can draw a significant amount of power. When we talk about straight line racing, this can be a radio controlled boat going from point A to point B in a straight line trying to achieve the highest maximum speed that's possible. Same idea for a car, and you have a similar type that is even there for radio controlled airplanes and similar vehicles. And essentially what you can get into with this type of racing is currents that easily exceed over 300 amps and as high as upwards 500 amps of peak power being drawn from your power system. With that amount of power being drawn, some batteries will not be able to hit that 3.00 volts. And we're not talking about cheap batteries here. We're talking about batteries that have a reputation for being good. They will not even be able to maintain from a full state of charge 3.00 volts under that significant load. And that's why in this case, you would have to do things differently. And my recommendation to do that is to go and review your data log for the power that you're actually pulling from that model. Uh, my recommendations here as the last item that we have up on the board, if you have a radio control car and you're just bashing around, you don't have a high performance system, you just have a mediocre system, because this is a car, you are pretty safe if power were to run out. It'll just end up slowing down and eventually stopping if you do not decide to bring it in right away. In that case, I would recommend a voltage cutoff of around 3.3 to 3.4 volts per cell, and that would be to start. And lastly, if you have a radio control airplane, I define here a radio control airplane as a high wing trainer style airplane where if you cut all power to the motor, that airplane would be easily able to glide down so that you are able to land. I'd recommend somewhere around 3.2 to 3.4 volts per cell to start. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you were able to take something away from what we talked about today. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.